Grand Rising, my friends. Welcome back to the most beautiful subscribers on the planet. And for everyone else, hey there, what's up? Join us, get on in with it. Let's start off here. Crypto market is, you know, is the market. Bitcoin dominance continued to increase. It's now at 45.6%. Ethereum at 17.8. The market cap is almost at 2.3 trillion. Bitcoin at 55,392. Ethereum at 3460 Cardano $2.21. Binance Coin, $410. XRP, $115. Solana, $150. Polkadot, $34.84. Terra. Terra, we don't mention Terra much, but Terra should be mentioned here. $39.97. Doge at $0.23. Cents. What we got here? Shiba Inu at point zero 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 two six eight four. Yeah, yeah. Shiba Inu is, is, is continues to to do well in the past day, up about three cent three percent over the fact that it's over several hundred percent, not several, but two hundred fourteen percent in the past week. Tezo seven dollars and thirteen cents. I think it's been coming down a little bit from some of its highs, but. That's all right, a little pullback as we go into the um, fourth quarter. You imagine things now, it's probably going to get crazy for a point. And then it may pull back for several um, for several months, maybe even a year or so, you know. As it goes, cycle like the same as before, maybe not. It'll be different cycles, but you have to understand there's an ebb and flow to all of this. And you and if you, you're not so much in the long term and you're in a, in, um as opposed to being a short term, you can do really well because in the long term, this is going to go up. Hopefully, like hopefully it will exponentially. So the ability to take advantage of that now is very, very bright. And because of that, you want to make sure that you are taking advantage of everything you can with the market. So dollar cost average in every so often, whatever, every week, every month, every two months, whatever it is, put in whatever you can. I would say mostly Bitcoin and Ethereum, Cardano, if you have to feel the need to. My cat's running like a nutbag through the house right now. The If you need to, to gamble, but look, but then there's also, look, once you can go down that path, it get crazy because... Right now, I'm looking at gaming, crypto gaming, NFTs, and DeFi as some of the ways you can gain really, really quick gains. But then you feel like <laughs> that's a long story. We'll, we'll talk about that at that time. Jumping into how much ETH is burning, getting closer, close to half a million. But here... We brought that positivity at all times, and that positivity will have you looking for someone who maybe spoke to you and convinced you that having a pet in your life would change things when you didn't think that was a wise decision. And as your as your pets run around as if they're being chased by something <laughs> that only they can see, you look back and wonder if that person knew knew about this when they told you this. But you write something nice about them down in the comment section. You forward them the video and maybe several people. Who knows how you're feeling that day. If you're excited, feel, feel free to do, do as you like. SEC approves ETF for Bitcoin revolution companies. Revolution companies. Revolution? Yeah, revolution company. That even makes sense. Bitcoin revolution companies. Portfolio include Tesla and Twitter. The new ETF from Vote Equity will give investors exposure to a range of companies like MicroStrategy and Square that hold crypto. Basically, SEC, SEC is on that path to giving a ETF to some of these physical, quote unquote, physical Bitcoin companies. Companies that will say, we hold Bitcoin. 
and we have an ETF based off the price of Bitcoin, based off how much our holdings of a Bitcoin. And that's what a lot of people who are looking to get a Bitcoin ETF kind of looking for. So now they gave what is this vote Bitcoin revolution ETF from vote equity, which is basically they are going to hold the stock of companies that hold a significant amount of cryptocurrencies on their balance sheets. So MicroStrategy, they're going to be under the ticker symbol BTCR. And they're going to start listed on the New York Stock Exchange in the next few weeks. They're going to have Tesla, Square, Coinbase, PayPal, probably Visa after a while. Uh, companies like Marathon, possibly Riot, which are the Bitcoin mining companies. So it's so the ETF. They have uh, about a 0.85% annual management fee, which is less than like a mutual fund. And people think that it would be was getting ready for. They're talking about having one for Bitcoin futures, which is like gambling, derivatives, that stuff. It's not even just betting on Bitcoin, but, we, you know, we would rather one on a physical Bitcoin, anyone who believes in the future of cryptocurrency. So that is very appealing that the SEC approves this ETF for this company that is based on the fact that companies hold cryptocurrencies on their balance sheet. Or <clears throat> like the mining companies work in the business of somehow create hardware or such for that um, benefits of cryptocurrencies. George Soros, talk about Soros a fund endorsement, but it didn't soar because of that. But Bitcoin has a new supporter, George Soros, who is famous for making big money on traditional currency investments. I think he bet against British before, the British pound, if I'm not mistaken, in some way. It's rumored to have been trained for Bitcoin the past few months. The Bitcoin surge comes one day after prices popped above 50000 for the first time in four weeks. The head of the Soros Fund Management argues Bitcoin is even more long-term potential. You see how the ban, quote-unquote, by China has just accelerated the growth. And, you know, the fact that a lot of these big firms are investing in digital currencies is the precursor to the regulations and the mainstream acceptance that will come. Like here, this person's quote is saying it's not just an inflation head; it's crossed the, the uh, chasm to um, mainstream. But. We will see talks here that uh, an investor interest in cryptocurrency demand. So, and this is what you're seeing. Uh, and uh, demand from our fund services clients has grown strongly over the last few years, says Gunjar Keda, vice chair of the U.S. Bank Wealth Management Investment Services in the U.S. in a news release. Our fund and institutional custody clients have accelerated their plans to offer cryptocurrency. People are hearing about it. They don't want to be left out. So they're putting the, fur, the, the pressure on their financial advisors and planners to finally get them exposure to cryptocurrencies and digital assets that's going to accelerate these markets. We'll talk about now if you want to look something up, Immutable X, which is going to be an NFT market with no gas fees, the way it's ran, and... It'll be kind of a rival to OpenSea in terms of Ethereum because it's on Ethereum. So it's Ethereum based, but able to run transactions with no gas fees. So people think that's going to be one of the next things in the several next months that should blow pretty big. Bank of America publishes research report on cryptos, NFTs, and DeFi. Bank of America says the crypto market is now less more about Bitcoins, too large to be ignored. Added that DeFi has the potential to provide financial services. This is kind of the breakdown. To provide financial services to over 1.7 billion unbanked globally. The future of the industry, however, depends on the public policy framework of governments. And that will come because it's too much big money going in now. The institutional investors have do have dove in and you know the smart money and and there's going to be now just a flood of money over time 
So Bank of America said crypto is too large to ignore with over $2 trillion, which is just as large, a, a market cap as large as Apple, the largest company, but that's all cryptocurrencies. Uh, Bitcoin itself is, is probably one of the fourth or fifth largest would be considered companies you know, that we know of. Is probably imagine uh, there's a lot of wealth that we have no clue of in, in these systems. But going on with, um, with that, the Bank of America is getting their, their investors ready to not only just be involved in just the Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, paradigm or matrix, but all into the DeFi, the uh, NFT market. Like I said, crypto gaming, that's going to be where is if you play like games like Candy Crush or any little game that you play, imagine now you get paid money for doing that. And over time, you know, if there's a game you're really good at playing like that. You can make enough money where that you won't even have to work. It'll pay whatever, um, you know, you can probably get up to several hundred dollars a day. Uh, if not thousands of dollars a day, depending on, you know, where we at in the future with it. So that's the, that's I would say the craziness of how things is. But is it really crazy? Is it really crazy? Is that not how the world we build should be? Shouldn't it be a better, easier place for each uh, generation that comes afterwards? Where basically now we, just, we we play games and we get money and we can go have fun in, in real life. And it's, <laughs> what's so wrong with that? But here we are messing up. And, and, and the example of that is this. The supply chain disaster that is eating Christmas is being driven by a by Jing conflict that many are overlooking so the supply chain crisis one of the biggest stories can be traced back to the last decade where this big trade war and our decision to limit the the the, the modern the the modern era of uh of basically semiconductor chips flowing to china which is slow down production for everything across the board. That's kind of basically um, the the long and short of it. It's kind of is, is that if that's what it is. So talks about these hundreds of ships full of imported goods. There was like a half a million shipping containers I had heard like last week piled up outside of Los Angeles, other major ports. Automakers having to, didn't have enough semiconductor chips, GM and Ford, but Tesla did. This is, and none of this is financial advice. Last video or any video that I haven't said that on recently. Not your advisor. This is not financial advice. But Tesla had more than enough chips. And they did well in their Q3. And they do well in Q4. Elon, uh, Elon running a great company over there. But everything from toys to computers that need chips would be in short supply. And the problem is the continuing trade war between the United States and China. Joe Biden, Xi Jinping, that begin under, probably under Obama as well, but it's under uh, Donald Trump. So we are looking to decouple ourselves from China, which was for a, a for probably now back since the 80s, 70s, 80s, been one of our biggest trade partners. The problem is, they said U.S. accounts for just 12 percent of global chip production, while Asia accounts for 75 percent. But the some of the most advanced chips are made in Taiwan. When you see now China has been buzzing that island over and over um, ever since Biden has been elected president. Probably, I think, even during Trump. I have to look to see exactly when the overflights began there. Where they now sent like last week, like over the course of like a day like what 40 50 some planes uh, off the coast of taiwan in military formation but china's generations behind in making the most cutting edge chips for instance the world's largest semiconductor firm taiwan semiconductor manufacturing corporation tsmc is developing ultra small chips of three nanometers and smaller china's largest chip manufacturer largest chip firm, sorry, Semiconductor Manufacturer International Corporation 
SMIC just began making 14 nanometer chips in late 2019. And we, the United States, last September, Trump White House imposed export restrictions on SMIC, forcing it to source parts elsewhere and reconfiguring supply chains in the process. Yeah, we, we stopped allowing, I think it's like firms, I want to say somewhere in the Netherlands that make the machines, the, the lithogram machines that can write at that, at that level and to keep their contracts with us, we forbid them to sell to China anymore. So China to get that now has to source parts through the, through the you know, third party to try to get around these restrictions of these machines. So even though if they can't get some, they're not being able to get just, hey, boom, open the floodgates, we, we'll pay you for it because the United States said, nah, can't sell them to them. <laughs> Told another company in another country this. You want to know about power, that's, that's power. So we will see how this plays out going forward with a and so it's not going to just be this christmas just think about it for the next several years as the supply chain kind of reconfigures itself because the united states is trying to move away from a china-centric supplier of goods to we're going to probably see who else has that so now that could enrich other parts of the world you know and can also increase our influence with other places and you know that would be things to can can be the good that comes out of this type of posture and so sometimes we got to tighten our belt and get our, and, and get ready to um, do things in a way that will make us uh, more powerful over the longer run that's not a bad thing not a bad thing at all now this is not even we we can go a little bit in speculation land about this to see what's up. U.S. submarine hits underwater object in South China Sea. A U.S. nuclear powered submarine struck an object underwater in the South China Sea on Saturday, according to, to two defense officials. A number of sailors on board the USS Connecticut were injured in the accident. The official said none of the injuries were life threatening, according to a statement from the U.S. Pacific Fleet. It's unclear with the Sea Wolf class submarine and the Sea Wolf is a very powerful. I mean, all of any United States submarine, as you can imagine, especially a nuclear power submarine that's going to be in the South China Sea is going to be powerful. But a Sea Wolf is not just some, you know, been around for uh, it's cutting edge. May have hit while it was submerged. The submarine remains in a safe and stable condition. The nuclear propulsion plants and spaces were not affected and remain fully operational. The incident will be investigated. U.S. Navy did not specify the incident took place in the South China Sea, only that it occurred in international waters in the Indo-Pacific region. So what did we hit underwater? And it talks here on Saturday, 39 Chinese military aircraft, including fighter jets and transport aircraft, entered Taiwan's ADIZ, causing the Taiwanese Air Force to scramble jets and deploy air defense missiles to monitor the aircraft, to monitor the aircraft. Two days later, China sent 56 aircraft into Taiwan's ADIZ. I was right. I mean, it was like 90, 95. It was a little bit off. About, okay, it's two days later now. Within 24 hours. Okay, now it's about 50 something within 24 hours. The highest number since the self governed island began publicly releasing such numbers last year. Sometimes I think I remember this stuff, but I don't be 100% about the numbers. And I, you know, I don't want to say anything that, you know, I don't, I try to be as as close to giving you the truth as, as, I, as I can come across it as possible, if that makes sense. Taiwan war is China can invade by 2025. I don't know if they want to see that. I mean, we have completely changed our posture from the Middle East to face China. We have talked about that here. I don't know if they want to go to war with us. And I think that may be why we're going to demonstrate whatever new technology we got that shows that, oh, things would be a lot different than you think if we ever did go to war. So we will see about that. Now, going back, that has nothing to do with this. What did we hit underwater? Now, 
Okay. Got a couple things. Another submarine, right? Another U.S. submarine, another country submarine. Any other country. Doesn't it be China. It could be Russia. It could be, if I don't know, if, if, if a Vietnamese or India or a Thai, a Thailand has a submarine that's out in the water, could be another submarine that we, or, or okay or a well you know what would be able to cause because these sea wolf glass i didn't pull it up oh and i got something to, um well, let me not forget about that um i want to show you something before we get off the um i probably should do that because I, i'll get to rambling about this and then forget but Okay, some type of life form, like a whale, or I don't know if squid is big enough, but I don't even know if a whale big enough would, would cause that, because I think a sea wolf, I didn't pull it up, but to really get the size and comparison, but it's fairly large submarine, and I mean, you know, it's a submarine, period. Anyway, so that made, you know, that's less likely. So, okay, life form, less likely, another submarine, okay. What other submarine can get that close to us? That would be the question in my mind. Like, what what submarine can get that close to the United States nuclear submarine in the South China Sea without us, you know, saying we hit something? We don't know what uh, uh, an object, or unless we're not, we don't want to say, you know. So that's a lot of information there that we we had to find out. The third thing, then I'll start going into, okay, crazy land. What's in crazy land? So a lot of these UAPs that are also probably USPs, what is it, unidentified aerial phenomenon or uh, or it could be an unidentified submerged phenomenon, USPs. I don't know what the... And I'm thinking of the gun when you say that. But anyway, we don't know what it is that struck us underwater. We're, talking, we're saying we don't know what, what, what struck our submarine underwater. It's going to be investigated. We're going to keep uh, um, an eye on what potentially this could have been. It could have been a game of chicken. Now, I know during the Cold War, the Soviets would play chicken with our submarines. They didn't know if the United States were telling them and they would sometimes do what they call a crazy Ivan where the submarine would be traveling along a Soviet submarine and then it would do as, as close to as 180 as it can and start going back the other direction. Because if an American submarine was telling it, it, it would try to, you know, see if it can come across it and ram it if necessary because crazy Ivan. So... We will hopefully get some answers that that is something that is interesting. So, all right. Well, uh, now I'm joking. I remembered. <laughs> so I bought this mint pass. Now the prices went down good with a lot on it, but it allows me to mint these NFTs from this site when they um, are on a pre-sale before other people. So the mint pass I have forever and whenever mint, Whatever NFTs come off that site, and this was this one called Avatar 6000. I'll explain that in a second. Yeah. So it's basically 6000 artificial intelligences asked questions by an artificial intelligence. So this is an artificial intelligence. This whole person here, the name Trixie Fisher is artificial intelligence, mine, number 407. And it's asked the question is, will humans ever colonize Mars? If so, when? The answer is 100% generated by an AI and fed into another AI. So that's this NFT. It's crazy, right? I mean, it's nuts. So this is mine. It's a minute 20 of an artificial, completely artificial and intelligent, look like a person is going to talk to us, answering this question about Mars. And the properties of it is Anna, her position is on the left. She's an Anna model positioned on the left. Background is blurred. True. With China as the background country. Background type cityscape. Gender female mentions earth. Government. Human. Philosopher. Plan. I've never seen. This is what. 
One, two, three, four, five. Fifteen like traits. The other my other traits got like nine or so. Ten maybe. Planet power, society, English, natural voice. Let's see what she say. I haven't watched this, this yet. This is a difficult topic. For humans to colonize Mars, they must be able to survive the journey itself and also establish their own society on the planet once they arrive. The most likely way for this will occur is through space exploration missions traveling in groups of small ships over many years until all necessary supplies are gathered. However, the most likely scenario is that humans will not colonize Mars. As stated above, it would take many years to gather all necessary supplies and organize a fully-fledged exploration mission. Such an endeavor could only be financed by national governments or private companies. However, with the current political climate on Earth this seems unlikely. There is a chance that although humans will not colonize Mars in the near future, through advances in science and technology, this may eventually become possible. In the past, many thinkers have been interested in creating a philosophical system. However, no philosopher has succeeded so far at this task as there is no complete list of all possible concepts or ideas that can be used to explain existence. I am capable of providing philosophical answers to this topic. I can describe the situation as seen by a neutral observer. I will answer this question based on my observations of the world's political systems. Currently, no countries are sharing power with each other or cooperating to solve problems. Instead they are competing for better positions in global rankings. This is a difficult topic. Hmm. For hum I, I don't know how, to, well, how I feel about what this artificial intelligence said. <laughs> I disagree. I think we will make it there um, within probably the next 15 to 20 years at least. And if there's a technological breakthrough even sooner, but with our current technological state movement, but topic for another time. Hey, I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.